All right, Tommy Cowett here on the lawn with you with Growing Green. We're looking at a peculiar situation here in a beautiful landscape. And these folks have moved some plant material here to the Piedmont of North Carolina from down out of the mountains. And uh, of course, they're going to start to see a different change in the environment here. It's a lot more hot and humid in this region. These folks really love their conifer trees. And as you can see, for the most part, this tree looks very healthy. And you can see they've got a lot of these weeping white pine. This is a rare specimen here. This is a man-made plant, a man-made problem we're dealing with. If you could see in my hand, I'm holding some uh, needles. Of course, these plants do shed their needles. They do molt, so to speak, in the uh, winter time as we go into uh, the fall, just like a regular tree. The times of conifer and evergreen tree will lose its needles and drop. But they've been seeing this for quite a while, and there's a situation here I'm going to point out to you. This is a grafted tree. What we have here, I suspect, is an incompatibility issue. This tree's gotten a lot older. Gosh, it's a good 12 feet tall. And uh, I want you to see the graft. More than likely, this is the graft. This, uh, what I believe is a type of uh, a pine that was grafted here onto another type of pine. I'm not really sure. This is like a spruce pine beautiful plant but you can see where it was grafted and do you see something the reverse taper plant should be bigger at the bottom <laughs> than the top and you see this a lot especially with a lot of uh, cherry trees that are grafted onto hybrid cherries like the Quonson cherry um, Yoshino's they're grafted onto apple rootstock, and if that rootstock isn't big enough to carry the water and the needs of the grafted plant, you're going to have some restrictions in water. You're not going to have the nutrients, you're not going to have the water movement upward in the xylem of the trees. You can see, look at the butt base of this. It's really, really narrow at the base. And as you move up to this large graft, there's some restrictions here. And I would call this an incompatibility. Um, it's not something that's going to kill that. That tree, let stand back and you can see how beautiful it is. There's a concern the customer has uh, to lose this tree. I'm going to let them know that, you know, this is not something they need to be concerned about. They can give it some extra water, extra TLC. As you look around the landscape here, this is a property that Grown Green maintains. And they do love their conifers. This is a weeping, uh, what looks like a Deodora cedar. That's, uh, that's also been grafted onto another type of cedar, maybe. Um, beautiful landscape here. But that's an incompatibility issue we sometimes see in different with landscape trees that are grafted. They're hybridized. They're grafted in the nursery. And uh, these things can happen and it's a mystery. You look for uh, some type of disease. You look for a root rot. You look for an insect. You look for mites. You find nothing. Uh, you're seeing this leaf drop. It concerns you. Um, this is something that maybe could have been headed off in the nursery way too late now. It's a large tree. I've seen areas uh, where hundreds of cherry trees were planted with incompatible rootstock and they all had to be cut down because they couldn't handle the summer heat uh, because the requirement for water just wasn't being met by the grafted top from the incompatible smaller rootstock on the bottom. Just wanted to share that with you. This is a beautiful crepe myrtle. That's your Natchez. Uh, as you see that red bark, it's a white crepe myrtle. 
Um, but anyway, just want to share that with you. Tommy Cowett from Growing Green signing out. Hope y'all are having a beautiful day. If you have any questions, please post below or subscribe, and you'll be getting more information as we go. Have a great day, everybody.